Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 29th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. Thank God I don't work at Starbucks. Okay, my friends. If you happen to work for Starbucks, I feel extremely sorry for you. Now, you're probably not hearing this because, as many of you know, today, as Starbucks is calling it, is 529 day. You know, almost like 9-11. It's a, a huge day. It's a watershed day. It's a day that's not Tuesday, May 29th. No, 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 no. It's 529. It's 529. You're going to remember life pre-529, and then there's life post-529. And so what is 529? Well, 529, according to Starbucks, is the day that they forced, compelled all of their employees in all of their stores to take a four-hour, quote-unquote, racial sensitivity training class. All st if you're wondering why right now, you're probably thinking, hmm, it's my lunch break. Maybe I want to head off to Starbucks, get myself a $7 latte or whatever it may be. It's closed. Why is it closed? Because every employee is now getting essentially indoctrinated in racial bias sensitivity training. And the reason why Safeway is doing this, like they don't have better things to do, but let that go. The reason why they're doing this is because weeks ago at one of their stores in Philadelphia, two black men walked in. They were not paying customers. They didn't want to buy a coffee or a muffin. Hell, not even a bottle of water. They were basically loitering. They're squatting. One of them asked to go to use the bathroom. The manager said, well, you know, are you planning on buying something? And they said no. So the manager said, well, no, it's for paying customers. So they sat down. They claimed for a business meeting that they were waiting for others to come for a business meeting, quote unquote, a business meeting where nobody buys coffee, a business meeting where nobody buys a bottle of water. A business meeting where nobody even buys a, a muffin or you name it, whatever, a, a banana, nothing. And so the manager saying, hey, what's going on here? Called the police. The police came. They refused to arrest these two African-American men. And it went viral. Social justice warriors. Everything is now videotaped via cell phone. It went everywhere. And Starbucks was branded now a racist company. In fact, leading the charge was Black Lives Matter. So there was Black Lives Matter. By the way, you want to talk about racists. An openly racist group itself. Anti-white. Anti-Jewish. Anti-police. And there they were with their signs saying Starbucks is a racist company. Well, before you know it, the two African-American men sued Starbucks. Starbucks settled. They made out like bandits. And now every employee has to undergo, I swear to you, quote unquote, sensitivity training, bias sensitivity. So it's going on for at least four hours. Their stores are closed this afternoon. Good luck trying to get a coffee because they're closed. Now, the chairman and the CEO are in this video that they're showing to every single employee. They also have sensitivity experts, social justice warriors, who are going to be joining these Starbucks managers in lecturing all of these baristas, everybody that works at a Starbucks, about how, I swear to you, I got the info right in front of me. This is what Starbucks is claiming. It's their words, not mine. Everyone's implicit racism and bias. So they're essentially calling their employees, whether they know it or not, a bunch of bigots and racists. It may be on a subconscious level, as they put it, on a subliminal level, 
on an, you know, on a, uh, not on an explicit, but on an implicit level. But nevertheless, you work at Starbucks, you're an employee, you're a bigot. And so they want you to know the depths of your bigotry. They want you in these meetings, I swear to you, to confess your bigotry. To talk about that you stereotype people, how you're a bigot or you're biased against people for no reason. They want you to feel free to confess your sins against tolerance and compassion and respect for diversity. And over this four-hour period, you're going to be lectured to by so-called sensitivity experts. Basically, these are indoctrination camps. What you're seeing now, I'm choosing my words very carefully, are indoctrination camps for Starbucks employees. But here's the kicker. The rapper and hip-hop artist, Common, is also in the video. And he's there telling all the employees in the video, you need to get rid of your bigotry and your racism. You need to own up that you're racists, all of you, especially, obviously, the white employees. Now, I want you to think about this. Who are we to take advice from some degenerate rapper? Point number one. Point number two. Whatever you think about what happened at that one Starbucks store in Philadelphia, how the hell does this apply to every single Starbucks employee? In other words, why does everybody have to pay because of what happened in Philadelphia? And number three, let me be very candid with you, okay? If I'm working at Starbucks and I'm making 10, 11 bucks an hour, this is not worth it. It really isn't. Because they're all being shown in these videos. Uh, there's a history they're going to be, I swear, there's a history of the civil rights movement and of the oppression of blacks and the enslavement of blacks, and the segregation of blacks. So now they're basically telling you that if you don't, if you call the police on somebody who's not a paying customer, you're essentially now part of the KKK, and you're part of the white supremacist movement. What they're obviously saying is that white people are racist. Nobody else. No other group of people, no other race, only whites seem to have a monopoly on racism. Now, I'm a Starbucks employee. Under the new policy changes, Starbucks has now become, uh, become essentially glorified homeless shelters. So I've got homeless people now coming into Starbucks. It's now been documented. You have drug addicts coming into Starbucks, shooting up in the bathrooms. It is getting so bad in places like Philadelphia, like Chicago, here in Boston. Employees are complaining. They've got needles everywhere, syringes everywhere, homeless people. They stink everywhere. They smell. There's a bad odor. They're wiping blood off the walls. And on top of all of that, now teenagers are descending on Starbucks because they used to walk through the mall. But now they realize, hey, hey, Starbucks says you can hang out all day. It's a, quote, welcoming space. You don't buy anything. You can stay till your heart's content. And so now you have teenagers, homeless people, drug addicts, literally now saturating these Starbucks stores. And they're Snapchatting online, hoping to catch something to sue somebody over anything. If I'm a customer... Why the hell would I want to go to Starbucks? And most of all, if I'm an employee making 10, 11 bucks an hour, I'm like, I don't need this. I got to deal with homeless people, drug addicts, out of control teenagers. And now I'm getting indoctrinated into how I'm a racist after I'm cleaning the blood off of walls and pulling needles and syringes off the bathroom floor. Listen now to a taste, a taste of the video that's now being shown to every single Starbucks employee. Probably right now as I speak. This is what they're going through right now. Roll it, Brittany. Without a doubt, the events in Philadelphia prompted us to bring 8,000 stores and 175,000 partners together 
on 529 because that is not who we aspire to be. 529 is an opportunity to renew our commitment to the third place because we understand that racial and systemic bias have many causes, sources, and ways of showing up within each of us and in our communities. So to get things going, Kevin will welcome teams. We are here to make Starbucks a place where everyone, everyone feels welcome. In common, one of our guides will help folks start exploring their own identities. Helping people see each other fully. That's the rapper. That's common. That's the rapper. Once partners have gotten warmed up, they will start to explore the third place and its relation to our mission. The third place. Howard will join the conversation and explain why the third place even matters. Its origin story. And he'll also share his hopes and dreams for this next era. The third place. 529. The third place is the multicultural progressive utopia. Just shut up and serve the coffee. Just shut up and rip me. Look, to me, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I'm, you're charging me seven bucks for a lousy cup of latte, okay? All you do is put a little whipped cream in it. It's garbage coffee with whipped cream, and you call it a venti, or you give it some Italian name. And so you think, ooh, I'm in Milan. Ooh, I'm in Paris. Ooh, I'm so sophisticated, paying $7.50 for a garbage cup of coffee. Just when you're stealing my money like that, robbing me blind, just shut up and serve the coffee. Am I wrong? 617-266-6868. Is it time to officially boycott Starbucks? And what do you make of those poor employees? Four hours of this, nonstop. Even Mao wasn't this ruthless. Okay, my friends, if you haven't heard it, today is 529. This is your chance to get to the third place. That special place, according to Starbucks. They are now, uh, they've closed their stores. If you're wondering why you're trying to get a coffee and it's not, nobody's there. I kid you not, they are in an indoctrination camp somewhere. Uh, they're being indoctrinated in why white people are racist, especially all the white employees. And now they have to confess their racism over a four hour period with sensitivity experts, bias training experts. And they have to watch a video uh, from Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson. He's in it. Chairman Howard Schultz. Uh, there's also prominent uh, employees. Sorry, what do you call them? These employee sensitivity trainers. And the rapper and hip-hop artist, Common. You know, the guy who is uh, doing rap music with scantily clad African-American women. The guy that keeps using the B word. Mother F this, F this, B this, ho this. He's lecturing us on how we need to be less racist and more inclusive in this video. So... Here is the last, uh, just, I gave you a little bit of the front end of the video. Here's a little bit of the back end of the video. If I'm an employee, I swear I'd walk out. I'd be like, and now I got to put up with drug addicts and homeless people and crazy out of control teenagers. And now you're calling me a freaking racist. Take your 10 bucks an hour and shove it. Here Together, it is. Partners will explore inspiration, partner stories, and problem solve using new tools to reiterate our commitment to the green apron what we look like in action when we are truly at our best ultimately 529 will focus on creating belonging in our stores and learning about what gets in the way but remember 529 will just be a start in the coming weeks months and years we will address many other facets of what makes us truly human the work will grow to reflect the realities of our abilities ethnicities gender identities and expressions, sexual identities, class, language, citizenship, political views, religious affiliations, and more. It won't be perfect, but we are all in this together. <laughs> Did you class all that citizenship, i.e. illegals? <laughs> they threw everything in there. Gender... <laughs> Racial identity, sexual identity, gender identity, uh, citizenship identity, i.e. illegals. They threw everything in there. I'm, 
I'm Jeff Cooner, and I'm a, I'm a racist. <laughs> racist. Like, I saw a homeless guy, and he was shooting up in the bathroom, and I, I thought to myself, you shouldn't be in here. I'm a racist. I'm an horrible, evil person. I just, no. I, 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 <clears throat> this is pathetic. Honestly, this is pathetic. 617-266-6868. Look. I never go to Starbucks. You know my feelings about... I, I don't even drink coffee. But you know my feelings about Starbucks. But my wife is a long-time paying customer. Grace doesn't care if you want to talk about her gender identity, her sexual identity, what she likes in the bedroom, what she doesn't like in the bedroom, her racial identity, her social identity, her class identity, her citizenship identity. She shut up. Take her $10 for a lousy grande or whatever it is, big cup of coffee, rip me off. She gets the coffee. She's out. That's it. People come in. They get their coffee. They leave. That's it. We don't want your third place. We don't want 529. They seriously are so drunk with power. They are now talking about transforming modern society as we know it. We you. 617-266-6868. Skippy and Southie, you're up next. Go ahead, Skippy. Hey, Jeff, first Hi. of all, tell Grace you get off that Starbucks. You, you could put action and able to have it with the money you'd be saving. Um, <laughs> but, but first of all, you know, what gets me is that, that CEO and the, the owner, whatever it is, Schultz or whatever, he's on there talking like it's these big, big social warrior uh, speeches. All those people did the day that this incident happened was went by company policy. So what he's telling all his his employees is basically we're saying you're all racist up front and we're going to have to retrain you. Wait a minute. I hope somebody's kept a couple of memorandums that showed that's what their policy was. No one gets to sit down there like who's the bottom unless they're a, a, a customer. Now, I also wonder. Now, I'm sure there's been tons of. Blacks and whites and Asians and whatever. That have been, okay, we can't say, okay, sorry, we got your policy. But these two particular individuals made, and I'm sure there was a lot of back and forth between them and to the point where the police had to come. So, but it, let's say these two white people did that, sat there and had that big back and forth that the police had to come. Would this CEO go to such great lengths to re-educate everybody? No. Which didn't need to re-educate because it was a company policy. Bingo. They don't say, well, you made us to live by that policy. Now you're chastising us for it. Bingo. Uh, Skippy, you nailed it. You, and look, and I'll tell you why they did it. Because Black Lives Matter protested. That was why Black Lives Matter was protesting Starbucks, and again, they buckled to the social justice warriors. Now look, you want to buckle. That's your business. But if I'm an employee of Starbucks, I'm thinking like, and why does this affect me? And you want to give free coffee to black people. You want to give a settlement to these two guys. That's, that's your business. It's your money. It's your company. But don't you know, take it out on me. What did I do? Jeff, you know what's going to happen? The place is going to turn into a ship of fools. Because every shy soul is going to get a few clients. Hey, go in there, sit in there. We'll get a case out of this. There'll be no business. It'll be all like, like a New Year's Eve at the Nuthouse. <laughs> you nailed it. Thank you for that call, Skippy. Well, to me, you're right. Plus, I'll tell you what's going to finish Starbucks. I've already told Grace, I go, look, sweetheart, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You want to go through drive through that's fine. But I really would like it if you prefer it if you didn't go through the actual store. Why? Because there's drug addicts and homeless people there. Honestly, I don't feel safe with you going through that Starbucks. Now, drive through is still one thing, but to go into the store, it's it's now become they're becoming homeless, glorified homeless shelter camps with people shooting up in the bathroom. So, guys, are you selling coffee or are you selling heroin? 617-266-6868. Russ in Boston. You're up next. Go ahead, Russ. First of all, Jeff, those boneheads, okay, what they've done is they've admitted guilt by shutting down and doing this. And what they are admitting, that management failed to train its employees on what could be considered racist 
or what could be misconstrued as racist. Now, basically, if I was the person owning that company, that that kind of training, everybody would assign company policy, and then basically I would have got on the air and says, look, this is an, idle, an isolated incident. Go on our website. You can see what our company policy is, um, and we will deal with this individual. And that would have been the end of it, okay? But they admitted guilt, those stupid fools. So, Russ, you're saying this is almost like a lawsuit bonanza now. Of course it is, those stupid jackasses. Russ, what do you think? I mean, you think Star... I mean, let me ask you, is Starbucks going to go out of business? Here, is Starbucks going to go out of business? Will you buy your coffee from Starbucks? And if you were working at a Starbucks and they forced you to go through a four-hour uh, bias sensitivity video and training program, honestly... What would you do? 617-266-6868. We'll take your calls after this short news break. Mitt Romney doesn't think President Trump is a good role model. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom with those details. Take it away, Evan. Together, partners will explore inspiration, partner stories, and problem solve using new tools to reiterate our commitment to the Green Apron. What we look like in action when we are truly at our best. I feel like I'm back in North Korea now. You listen to this, you feel like, boy, oh boy. It's one of these classic communist re-education camps, except it's being brought to you courtesy of Starbucks. 617-266-6868. Okay, Starbucks has closed all of its stores for at least four hours this afternoon across the entire country to indoctrinate and give their employees so-called racial bias sensitivity training, saying they want to end racism and the first step is to educate its employees about what's racist, what's not racist. And they have a rapper common lecturing them. Their chairman, their CEO are telling them they need to change the way they think and perceive people of color. And they're also going to have to see a long video on top of this video, another video about the civil rights movement and the civil rights struggle against the segregation and white supremacy. So these poor Starbucks employees are basically being scolded for being racists, even though they've done nothing. 617-266-6868. Anthony in New Hampshire. You're up next. Thanks for holding, Anthony, and welcome. No, thank you for having me, Jeff. Can, can I just make a, a quick little joke first? Yes, of course. Um, you need to start adding, adding every day to the end of your show because upper management gave you an hour on the weekend. <laughs> you got it, Jeff. Every day we need an extra hour. You, they just gave you one extra hour. <laughs> anyway, about Starbucks. First, my evidence. Um, it was 100% racist what they did. Um, they, they, they threw those people out because they were black. Here's my, here's my reasoning behind my evidence. Uh, Starbucks is a Washington, Seattle, Washington based company. And we all know that Seattle, Washington is just like Silicon Valley. And if you were a conservative and you tried to work at a Starbucks and you tried to promote your conservative views, you'd be tossed out on your butt just like they were. So all this is, is evidence that liberals are racist in 2017. You mean 2018? Uh... 2018. No, this <laughs> happened in 2017, didn't it? Oh, you're, no, you're right. No, no, you're you're right. No, no, the incident. No, the incident happened a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I thought it was. Like, I thought it was a few months ago, and it took a little bit to get out. No, no, it was it was a couple of weeks they're ago. It's when I it's when I was in Aruba, Anthony. I mean, they're the ones that have the the racist policies. They're the ones that are the being the racist, and it's a liberal company, and it's a bunch of liberals that are at Starbucks. So it's the liberals that are the racists. Well, you know, Anthony, it's even worse than that. You have the chairman, I see Howard Schultz, you have the CEO, Johnson, uh, not to play the race card, but they're both white. It's and a publicity stunt for free advertisement, Jeff. You know, I think you're right. About everywhere. I think you're right, Anthony, because I'm looking at these guys with their showing the employees the you know history of the civil rights movement and white supremacy and segregation and white privilege. and So give up your jobs. They're being liberals using racism to promote their product by closing down for four hours to say, hey, look at us. We're not racist. 
All they're doing is advertising across the whole entire country to their liberal base, which is their customer. Bingo. Anthony, great call. Thank you for that call. All my, my rebuttal is very simple. No, really. If there's this implicit racism and bias and among all your employees, well, you know, you guys are also employees of Starbucks, correct? Right, Mr. Chairman? Right, Mr. CEO? Well, I look at you. You're white. He's white. You guys are all white. So, you know, maybe it's time for you guys to step aside and give away your job with its, you know, multi-million dollar salary and its perks and its benefits. Give it to a person of color. Put your money where your mouth is, you phony, you fraud, you. Oh, no, no. It's the $10 an hour schmucks. The ones that have to deal with the crazy homeless people and the drug addicts and now the teenagers. By the way, that's I'm telling you, they've opened it up now to teenagers who are just there Snapchatting, videotaping, and playing video games all day. They don't have to buy anything. Nothing. Okay? Not even 25 cents for a little, I don't know, a little candy or a little piece of chocolate. So how are you making this welcoming for your paying customers? You know what a pain in the rear it's going to be now just to go into a inside a Starbucks store? So... Okay, guys, go ahead. To me, I am done with the virtue signaling. Notice, everything now has to become politicized. Like, can't people just run a freaking business anymore? Well, really. Here's what we sell. We rip you off. We screw you. We shaft you over coffee, okay? You know what, Brittany? No, no, Brittany, I'm done. I, honestly, I'm done. I'm tired of being a poor, hardworking schmuck. You know what you and I are going to do, my friend? We're going to set up our own coffee shop. No, no, not the third way, the fourth way. It's even a better way. It's the fourth way, okay? The fourth option, not just the third option. It's the fourth option. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to make the same kind of crappy coffee that Starbucks does. I'll throw the whipped cream in, okay? You just make the lousy coffee. I'll, I'll throw in the lousy whipped cream, and we can bang them for $7.50. In the mornings, can you do me a favor? You go to Shaw's, get all their muffins, bring them in, double the price, and we'll go fresh from the bakery, and we'll stick in the muffins. I will go and buy the Poland Spring water bottles, the little, you know, the little water bottles from Shaw's. We'll buy cases of it, and we'll throw it in in the freezer, or sorry, in the fridge, and say, uh, 450, what the hell, 450. Now, on the coffees, remember this, we gotta do a, a European exotic name. Okay? So, it's a one dollar crappy cup of coffee, call it Cafe Francaise. Like a French coffee. You know what I mean? We'll call it, I don't know what, uh, un grand, un, not a grande, un grand, un grand. In French, it's a grand. It's a grand. <gasps> ooh, ooh, I'm in Paris. Ooh, I'm in Milan. Take my money. And, but we won't ram the politics down their throat. Here, we just steal your money. That's all. That's our business model. Here, we just take your money and that's it. We steal it. But we don't force you to watch uh, politically correct videos. Brittany, what do you think? We're multimillionaires, my friend. Excellent idea. It's a Cooner's coffee shop. Huh? What do you say, huh? No, no. It's got the fourth option. The fourth way. They got a third way, a third option. We want to go the fourth option, the fourth way. And then let's open it. When do you want to open it, Brittany? Uh, uh, we got to give them two weeks, right? Yeah. Let's give the company two weeks. So what's two weeks from today? Can somebody do the math for me? Two weeks June from today. June something. All right, it's, but that's important because they got 529. June they, 12th. Okay, 612. It's 612. There was pre-612, and then there's post-612. 612. The fourth option. The fourth way. Ten bucks for a cup of coffee. Blank you. Huh? I say we do it, Brittany. 617-266-6868. Charlotte in Boston. You're up next. Go ahead, Charlotte. Hi there, bulldozer. <laughs> Listen, th this is very dangerous. Any of those employees who get teary-eyed and fess up to having racist thoughts, that's going to follow them. It's going to be a record. So when they go to one for political office or city council or school committee or whatever, you betcha someone's going to dredge that up and label them as racist. They ought to walk the heck out of that place and not even open their mouth. That's point number one. Number two, 
I'm going to give Starbucks 529. I'm going to take all my five fingers and flip them five birds, and I'm going to do it 29 times. <laughs> La- lastly, lastly, let me ask one question. So if kids from the high school next to a Starbucks, so if two black kids, teenagers from the high school, go into a Starbucks and rob it the Starbucks, that means that every black kid in that high school is a thief? Because that's exactly what they've done with that one employee who followed the, the, the rules of the company and told those guys, whoever they were, you know, you can't stay here. So if anybody robs a Starbucks and they happen to be black and they happen to be from that high school, well, then we can label them all with the same brush the way they did. Brilliant. Charlotte, absolutely brilliant. Thank you for that call. What do liberals always say when it comes, say, to radical Islam? Don't blame an entire group for the actions of a few. What is Starbucks doing now? They're blaming all of their employees, or at least the white employees, for the actions of one individual. This is classic liberal hypocrisy at its worst. Brittany, do me a favor. Play that first cut again. This is the part of the video. There's there's 529. Was it the third way or the third option? Okay. This is. Without a doubt, the events in Philadelphia prompted us to bring 8,000 stores and 175,000 partners together on 529. Because that is not who we aspire to be. 529 is an opportunity to renew our commitment Mm. to the third place. The third place. That's what it is. The third place. I'm sorry. The third place. Well, Jeff Cooner and Brittany now, we're setting up the fourth place. The fourth place. 612. WRKO. Join the Relay for Life and help the American Cancer Society fund cancer research, free rides to chemo, free places to stay near hospitals. Register or donate today at relayforlife.org. Okay, so. What's going on at Starbucks today, very simple, is the deeply racist, bigoted assumption that whites are fundamentally racist. That's what the whole retraining program, the quote, I'm sorry, the bias sensitivity training to the supposed third place is really based on the premise that whites are racist. Okay, white employees are racist, their employees are racist, and that whites just, uh, you know, they, they got serious problems being, you know, they're intrinsically racist. Okay, I want to ask Starbucks, since they're showing this video, and they're also showing a video of the civil rights movement and segregation and white supremacy, yada, yada, yada. What about for, let's say, some of the African-American employees? Because just, you know, it's just because it's out there. Listen to this. Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, a prominent black Muslim, is not just a notorious anti-Semite. He despises and loathes whites. He has millions of followers. He is highly respected in the Democratic Party. In fact, there are pictures of him meeting with the dear leader, Barack Hussein Obama, before Obama ran for president, while Obama was president, and after the dear leader left the presidency. Well, at one of his sermons, just on Sunday morning, okay, couple days, it wasn't 529, it was 527. He was talking about even a higher place than the third place. A place where, according to him, whites are annihilated. All whites are exterminated. Don't believe me? Listen to this. He issued a call on Sunday that the it was a time for an end to all white men. Gone. They have to go. Because according to him, the nature of white men is, quote, not in harmony with the nature of God. He said that white men had squandered the time God gave them to rule alleging that they had chosen not to rule with righteousness, truth, justice, or fairness. And now he said that it is in the nature of the white man, in his intrinsic nature, to commit murder and to be dishonest. And so, according to him, you have to now exterminate, annihilate all white men. Because, you know, like the Jews under Hitler, there's something intrinsically evil about them. 
evil, murderous, uh, dishonest, imperialist, colonialist. There's going to be no videos about Louis Farrakhan. Okay, you don't like Louis Farrakhan. Listen now to this one. It's the most popular story on the New York Post. It is going everywhere across New York and is now going viral across the country. This was late last week on a, um, on a subway. This was on a subway, a city subway train in which a black woman, an African American woman with her three children beside her began to rant against an Orthodox Jewish man. And in particular, the train was extremely crowded. It was rush hour. This woman confronted a Jewish man who apparently is a software engineer for the Wall Street Journal. Now listen to this. He actually was trying to help her. He was telling to people around him on the train, uh, saying, look, this poor woman has three kids. Can This lady here has three kids. Can somebody please get up and give them your seat? Well, she starts getting agitated that nobody's giving up their seat for her. And then she turns... On Yossi Wolf, this Wall Street Journal software engineer who's on the train with her, who was initially trying to help her. And she starts saying, if this was a Jewish family, you all would have gotten up. At which point he then trying to help her says, hey, come on, quote. So he said, quote, can we please not make this a racist thing? Like, come on, hey, please. I'm trying to help you get a seat, but come on now. Don't start ranting against the Jews. And look at her explode on this guy. Roll it, Brittany. You said I'm being racist, so you you tell me what I'm being racist towards. Because you're Jewish, and I said if a Jewish family got on here, somebody would have got up. That is not a racist statement. That is a factual statement. And you need to learn the difference between race. Judaism is not a race. It is a religion. Judaism is a religion. No, I need to calm down now because I'm schooling your ass. You guys think you're so smart, but guess what? I'm going to teach you a lesson on this train today. I'm a person, you are a person. No, no, we're different. Understand that. No, we are different. You know why? Because your people treat my people different in our community. No, that's not true. The f*** are you talking about? She's right. You treat us different in our community. You don't even rent to us. What the f are you talking about? Your people. You said I was racist, so I'm addressing your people. You said I was racist, right? Because I brought up Judaism, right? You wouldn't have called me a racist if I said a Mexican family came on here, right? You wouldn't have called me a racist then, right? No, I'm, I'm not hateful. Let me, let me school you. No, I didn't say anything. Did I say Jews are dirty? Did I say they stink? No, I said it. But that is not a Jew. That is not a racist statement. Well, actually it is. <laughs> I mean, first of all, Juda uh, Jewishness, Judaism is both a race and a religion. It's both stupid. Okay, that's number one. Number two, look at the hatred against Jews. They won't rent to us. You guys oppress my people, my people versus your people. The woman's a freaking anti-Semite. She's a flaming anti-Semite and a flaming Jew hater. Now, and by the way, this is very prevalent among segments of the African-American community. Nobody wants to address it. Now, since the poor Starbucks employees have to look at videos of the civil rights movement, is anybody going to show a video of the Holocaust? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Chairman Schultz, Howard Schultz, or Frank Johnson. I'm just saying, you know, because it seems to me that racism cuts across all races, all ethnicities. It's not just the monopoly of one racial group. And in fact, to say that it is, is racism itself. My friends, enough is freaking enough. It's time to call out these race baiters once and for all. I've had it with this. Starbucks, you're an employee of Starbucks. You go to Starbucks, you're a customer of Starbucks. Your racial identity, your race, your color, your creed, your sexual orientation, your gender orientation, your whatever freaking orientation is nobody's business. I don't give a damn. Serve me the coffee, rip me off for a 750 latte, and shut up. 
Am I asking for too much? I think I am. 617-266-6868. Hang on, because I've got another story for you. Oh, oh, this one. You got to hear it. All right, President Trump, I think we're on again. May end up meeting with North Korea's leader, uh, the Little Rocket Man. After all, Evan Heidenrich is in the RKO newsroom. He's got all those details. Take it away, Evan.